24. We're having some fun. And, um, you know, this was brought up the other day. Nothing comes from nothing, right? And so uh, we've got folks that are having uh, a lot of success with um, activities in their pipeline, both set, had listings taken, and, and it all comes from somewhere, right? And, and when you really kind of boil it down, the folks that are having the most success in, in our industry, and I'd venture to say um, further than that across the board in any industry, would be those four core tenets of, of success there, showing up, doing the work, reporting the work, and reflecting on the work, and uh, an individual that, uh, and I should say that, um, it, Joe's team and organization has been a great demonstration of that uh, over the last number of months. And I'm excited for him to share a little bit about his journey there. Um, so I'm excited about introducing you, Mr. Joseph. Tell me about it. Um, before we jump into some of the details of what's going on today in the business, uh, I'd like to know a little bit about who, who are we talking to? Why are you here? Who are you, man? Uh, how far back do you want to go? I uh, remember you, you when know, I was pretty little. So oh, you, here, give me a life story in a Dixie cup, whatever that means to you. <laughs> um, I mean, I came from retail, if that helps. So I was a operations manager. So when you're talking like core four tenants, like I, I like to track numbers because numbers paint a picture. So um, I think that has a little bit to do with my background. Um Okay, so uh, like you, you, you kind of teased me out here a little bit. So you said I was in retail there. What type of retail and, and what caused you to consider getting into the real estate world? Cool. Well, that was, that's a loaded question, actually. <laughs> um, so I met my wife and my second wife, divorced once, um, and started to grow a family because we found that like, hey, family's a, a thing that we wanted to have like a, a big family. I wanted to have a lot of kids and I guess pass down, uh, you know, just, I wanted to have large family, um, you know, nice gatherings, that kind of stuff. And retail wasn't doing it. So I worked for Walgreens, which probably everybody knows, depending on which area you're in, um, Dunham's, which is a local sporting good chain. They're pretty, they're, they're mostly local to Wisconsin, but there are a few other places they have them. And then Bed Bath & Beyond, which, Glad I got out because they just went out of business not too long ago. Uh, but that was 12 years ago. Um, but I was the operations manager, which is essentially the same as the store manager. I ran everything that came in and out of the stores from marketing to purchasing to buying to putting it on the floor to running the employees to opening the doors to closing the doors. Um, just everything day to day that that involved. So, so um, I, I think I'm already hearing some parallels here with the real estate world, right? So you, you wore a lot of hats in that role, right? We're, we're, we're wearing a lot of hats as we're growing the organization. Um, and so th there are a lot, of, a lot of things there. I could imagine that the, the, some of the demands maybe put were in conflict with your, the, the values there of uh, family. Yeah, you, I mean, you hit it on the head. We, I've done the, the exercise before, but one of my main core values is family and uh, I was salaried and working 80 to 100 hours a week, most likely close to there, um, just wasn't in alignment with being there for my kids and my wife when they needed me most. So then you go ahead and you get into real estate, right? One of the number one reasons folks will get into real estate is freedom, right? But a lot of times we get the idea of freedom. Okay, we just show up and I'm my own boss. And the reality is, well, you tell me what the reality is. Is that freedom so, just, does it just come to us or what, what happens? So, I mean, yeah, my wife was like, Hey, do, do real estate. And we dug out, like, remember the old brown things you used to like put in there and they were called CDs. Oh. Um, we, I did all of my like real estate training on those. And I was like, man, I'm going to have freedom to do anything I want. And that was not the case, but you, you do have the freedom to schedule things accordingly. So I quickly learned like I could go to my son's t-ball game when he was little, but then I had to replace wherever I was supposed to do actions there somewhere else in the calendar. So over the years that's evolved and Jeff's on the call. He's my business partner. So if like he would, he just went on his honeymoon on a cruise and I took over the entire business and he does the same for me when I go out of town. So like we've even evolved from replacing our calendar 
and a, you know that kind of stuff with just assisting each other from day to day tasks. So, yeah, I mean to answer your question, yes, you do have freedom, but no, you don't. Okay, <laughs> you still so have to put in the work, right? Well, the dots that you're helping me connect here is that I get that freedom from a discipline, right? If I take discipline, if I own my calendar, then that's how I get the freedom, right? Without that discipline, then that freedom is really evaporated. It's a myth, right? Correct. Yep. And, and then, I, then I'm here to say next step, uh, the next thing there is that as I continue to grow, then I can go ahead and um, buy back more time uh, through leverage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, here. you even taught us that more. You're like, hey, like, get hire more people to do the things you don't want to do, right? Like, and we already knew that it was just we we had some rough patches. So I, Jeff and I have been in our team six years and we've hired and fired and got rid of and brought on a, a lot of people and we run a different kind of business in a way like it's very demanding and i think we expect the people to be exactly the way we are and we shouldn't we have to accept them for what they do and utilize them for what they're supposed to be doing and not expect them to become us so um okay. that was a good realization Okay, I definitely want to come back to that one here. Definitely want to come back to that. Um, but before doing so, though, so you kind of share, shared you've, you've been um, working together for six years. Kind of describe the business here. Really, over the last year or two, as, as our entire industry has seen uh, quite a few changes. Yeah. So, I mean, we got Jeff and I got in the business in 2012. So, we've been doing it for quite a long time. Started a team together six years ago. And you asked in the year and a half, it's been more. I mean, if you want to get into it, like show up, do the work, report the work is kind of where we were at. Like if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist, right? You have to start tracking the numbers so you can understand the outcome of what you want. And that was the biggest thing was just so things were happening differently than they used to. So then I had to, we had to really look at like, things were moving quicker and we had to adjust everything accordingly to understand what was happening. And then when the market just stopped basically, or it went down, how do we keep where we're at going? And what did that mean? So we had to adjust for the fact that the market went down a little and multiply that to figure out how many phone calls we had to make and how many contacts we had to get in front of to keep where our outcome the same essentially. Okay. So there's a couple things that I'm thinking of as you're sharing this with me. So the first thing like that, uh, is that it makes me think that awareness really empowers adaptation without that awareness. I might not be able to adapt to what's going on out there. Um, I'm also thinking to myself, I've got the luxury of kind of knowing, um, a little bit more about the business at, at a little bit more depth than what we've kind of gone into thus far. And we kind of glazed over, Hey, we fit, we were doing the showing up and we were doing the work and we're even reporting the work. Um, but I, I want to roll back a little bit to, uh, for, for you. What is, what does showing up mean? What, what does that mean to you? Uh, for me, it's oh, like, it, it's evolved over time. Like in the beginning, showing up meant showing up to the office, dialing into our dialer and making the phone calls and then reporting. I did an hour's worth of calling expires and here's my outcome. And that was it. Like, I was doing the things, checking the boxes, and for a long time, it made a lot of sense. And Jeff did the same thing, and he was like, yeah, we're doing great. Like, we're doing we're doing 98% better than any other agent in the office, basically, right? Like, yeah. they were just winging a prayer, calling their sphere, maybe doing some things here, attracting a couple deals, and we were diligently, you know, eight to five doing the things in the office, right? One of the only teams in the office a lot of the time, even. Yeah. You know, so like you're kind of broaching the, the sort of the, that um, this is where I had the, the, the luxury of seeing a significant growth. Actually, I don't know if it's significant growth. There's just character. Your character was revealed when when you start saying, hey, I'm not, I don't have such a big ego that I'm going to look past it and say, I already do this. Right, because when you break it down to the four very basic things, show up, do the work, report the work, reflect on the work, it really is that, isn't it? But then it's also, it's about how can I go deeper and master it? And, and you said, you know what? How can I get better in this area? And one of the things that I'm hearing you talk about here is when it was originally about more of a tenure type of a situation, 
how many hours am I putting into the activity? And so there's a, there's a winning culture of activity. You're winning in relationship to others, but then you knew internally that there was more, there was more opportunity in your potential. So how, how did you untap that? Um, Jeff and I were like, we, we hit like our glass ceiling, if you will, of a couple of years, like we did similar production and it was really at that level where I was like, I mean, we were doing good. We made enough money to fund our lives and then some, and I mean, Jeff has multiple, um, duplexes and he's, you know, thriving that way. And I mean, my kids are taken care of and my wife's taken care of. And then it was like, I, I mean, my number one thing that I live by is ask yourself better questions. So while I'm making the phone calls, is that all I'm supposed to be doing? Or do I have something else up on the screen? Am I texting while I'm calling? Because people text now a lot more than they did back then. Am I emailing them? Could I send a handwritten letter or a postcard? Like, am I doing everything 100%? Or is this even something I should be doing? Like asking yourself a question of that, like, why am I doing, is this a lead gen pillar I should be? Is it one of my top three priorities on my GPS or on my 135? Like, and then why is it there? Does it align with what I want to do? Can so I just, can I just say something? Like, so I, I love where we're going with this, right? So you're saying here, like the power of the results that you're seeing, which by the way, we haven't even touched on that, but you've got a, an exploding pipeline, uh, a pretty phenomenal first quarter set up and in and, and your excited about the energy that comes with that. Um, but what I'm interested in here is that you're just talking about questions, right? And, and the first thing I'm thinking about is I've got to be in the right state of mind to go ahead and even be asking myself questions, right? Like, like how did you get there, right? How did you get there and instead of saying like, you know, I'm just going to do more, like I've got this figured out, right? How'd you, how'd you strip the ego? How'd you go ahead and be, have that humble, without that humble attitude? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just how old I am. <laughs> I got rid of the ego and started asking better questions. Um, I know a lot of it was you, John, um, not to like, Hey, this is all about John kind of thing, but like, for sure. Like I said up front, like I'm going to be tough to be coached because I want to be a coach and I've been doing this for 12 years and that's the biggest and worst thing you can say, like, I've been doing this 12 years and this is the way it is. Like, and I know that I'm, I'm like, Hey, sure. I have tenure and I've seen it up and down, but I need to ask better questions and I need a 30,000 foot view. And I only have a 5,000 foot view. And I told you that up front. like, I can only ask myself so many questions. I can only see so far in front of myself. Hmm. And when you started like, when we started tracking with your tracker and you started asking those questions, I was like, is that to like the whole day? Can I apply that to like after the fact? Can I apply that to like, I apply it to cert, like, what was the winning thing I did today? That could have been, I went to go see my daughter at her recital. And how did I win? I left my phone in the car. You know, like th that's how I, that's how I won the day yesterday. Today is, calling or maybe this call that I'm on and helping maybe light something in someone's brain going, holy crap, I just have to be better than I was yesterday. And I, that's by asking myself better questions. Okay. Am so I doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing? Did I give my all? Was I intentional? You know? I love, I love, I love what we're going. And, and that's, all, that's the whole conversation we're having here. Elevating intentionality, right? And to your point, everything that you're doing, we've been doing in the past, right? It's just, what, what can I do at a high, heightened level of intentionality? Um, all right, well, let's start with this. Walk, walk me through the day. What's that perfect day look like for Jeff? Uh, well, I get up at 4.30 and I work out for an hour. Um, shower, get the kids ready, which I say get the kids ready, but now it's just hanging out with the kids while they make their lunches because they're all older in high school, middle school. Um, and then off to work and I'm usually in the office by seven, um, getting my lead gen set up answer. Pause, 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 pause. Okay. So to me, like, like maybe there's an unconscious confidence and, uh, competency and, uh, around this, but I just heard show up. Mm -hmm. I heard somebody that treats it like a, like a real job. Like this is what we do. We show up at work, right. And you're at what time are you in? 
Seven. Okay. All right. Back to you. Um, I usually like in Gmail, you can tell when your emails go out. So I'll send them out, like have them all send out at like eight o'clock. So it shows like I'm sending my emails out at eight. I get all those done. And then Jeff and I jump on. Why do you do that? Hold on. Hold on. Why do you do that? Because I don't want them bothering me before that. I don't know. Like certain people, like my title company, Jeff, you know, people that I'm, I know I, I send them out, but like clients and that it's eight o'clock because they don't, they can't touch me before that essentially. Cause I, I hold my time hostage is what I call it. Um, so do you, do you set that expectation over your clients beforehand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, if it's important and we have a deal going on and we have an accepted offer or something like, absolutely. I passed the time of eight and eight. Um, I, I'm available if it's a 911. Just text me that and we'll jump on. But other than that, most if you if you need me after eight o'clock at night or eight in the morning, your your house better be on fire because otherwise it can wait, you know? So have you lost any deals after you shared that? No. And I mean, if it really is on fire, do you really want to call your real estate agent or do you want to call the fire department? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're bringing levity to it. Hello. Okay. All right. So you're not sending anything out till eight. Then what's happening? Uh, 745 before I jump on the call, like we jump on expires right away at eight o'clock. Uh, Jeff and I script practice every single day, like rain or shine and less like vacation. Or the occasional, like we stayed up too late, which doesn't really happen now that we're this old, but. <laughs> okay. So this, this, this is treating our business uh, um, as a business showing up and really respecting our calendar taking control of our calendar okay so now we've got the description role play we're giving our conversations so some of the things we've talked about in the past is is really kind of creating that that breakfast of champion and that that morning menu of who you're reaching out to right if we, we consider the power question who who are the conversations i need to have with that could help me uh, attract a listing or a price reduction write a contract or add to my pipeline who's on that list for you what does your list look like who, you're reaching out to folks. So I always start with uh, expireds, brand new, fresh expireds right off the press. Uh, they automatically load in. We use Vulcan 7. Um, that I used to dial in and be like, okay, I'm calling for an hour. And I would sit there and listen to the phone ring and it'd be an hour. Now I get through the first, like however many are there, whether it's 10 or 200, um, that's how long I call for. I get through the new ones. Um, if I had a lot of success, um, I will flip over and dial like old expireds, meaning like a few weeks ago to see if they relisted or not. Um, cause I have a lot of answers. If not, I'm moving on to like on Mondays, I call for sale by owners because they just went through a weekend and if they didn't get an accepted offer, maybe they're defeated. So I do that. Um, the rest of the week, it really is leads leads that come in. So I'm, I'm working on those. Then I'm working on my cultivate pipeline, trying to see if I can move up a timeline. Uh, we were just practicing today. Um, what about two to three weeks earlier than spring? What does spring look like for you? Like different scripts around that. Then so, um, pause it really, I'm, I'm, this is something I'm getting quite a bit. So what, what's the number one objection you're getting or what, what are you doing to help bring some urgency to the, some of those folks? And by the way, one of the major takeaways, the simple takeaway that I have here is that you're actually having conversations with people in your pipeline to go ahead and offer perspective that could help them bring urgency to, to the process. They're not, you're not just waiting for them to come to you. Uh, if it's a spring, you're talking springtime. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if it's the common objection of springtime, I know Jeff and Jeff and I literally just did this before I left the office to let my dogs out and jump on this call was, well, there's more buyers in spring and it was okay, great. Like I hear that. And that makes a lot of sense. More buyers are better. Right. But that also means more houses for sale. Cause there's people just like you saying the same thing. Would you agree? Right. So what if you, we adjusted your timeline two to three weeks earlier, supply and demand, right? You're the only house. There's more demand that increases your value typically is what we see. So kind of something around those lines is what we are toying with as far as like, scripting 
So by the way, one of the things I love about what you shared here is that you just used an incremental commitment here. You didn't say, hey, you're thinking spring. I was thinking January 15th. You said, hey, a couple of weeks here, right? I love this. Okay. All right. So I cut you off there, but I wanted to go a little bit in depth there because that's something I'm getting a lot of questions about. And I know that you're right there on the front lines. I'm curious what you're saying. Um, and so now I'm having conversations there. When, when do we get a hold of our, our sphere? So that's after lunch or a break or whatever you want to do. Like sometimes we eat at the desk, sometimes we're out. Um, and we do what's called a power hour. And it's more evolved to like an hour and a half. <laughs> um, but in there, in our calendar, we, we literally click and it goes right to command and it calls it like it goes right to our tasks. And that's we have our sphere in there so it's quarterly calls is how we do it we don't do like a dtd2 or anything it literally does it tells us like call this person and i could do that like i called somebody on the way home while i drove it takes me 20 minutes i'll have a nice conversation with my client on the way home or whatever on the way to appointments sometimes i sit in my office and do it on my couch and just you know relax and have some conversations but then it's follow-up it's literally I don't know, Jeff, 85%, 90% of our business comes from following up with clients that I've converted from expired for sale by owners, from command, from our pipeline. It's like, hey, you got to call this person. And it literally tells me, call this person, call this person. And I just, it, it's easy because I've set it up to be that way. And I just go down the list and call the people that I'm supposed to call that day because they're in my calendar and in my power hour. And we call it the power hour because that's where you make your money. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So you're bringing some, some might say that you're bringing an extreme discipline to having uh, the, the calls and the lead generation. And, and I'm going to clump lead follow up in there. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so we just talked about earlier that with that discipline, it, it yields freedom. So what does the freedom look like for you? Well, I can take my family on vacation or adjust my schedule accordingly. Like if I have something going on in the morning, um, I forget what you call it, but it's your flex days. I don't call all the leads that I just told you about. I focus on my pipeline and my follow-up for that day because I know those people are going to move forward most likely other than the others. Yeah, I didn't get to call my expireds first thing. So if I still have time, I'll get to do those. But other than that, like... I don't need to follow up on every lead 100% that exact day. That can move to the next day. Got it. So okay, in okay. intention is who do I call if I have a flex day because I scheduled something or a seller needed to only meet in the morning because they don't want to meet at night or they work third, second shift, whatever. So I have the flexibility of adjusting my schedule, but still holding my time hostage, if you will. So Hey, wife, dinner's ready. <laughs> I got to go in my office and finish up my phone calls because I adjusted my schedule today. Perfect. And that happens once a week. I still have the whole rest of the week that I was home with my family or vice versa, whatever. So, Which to give some context here, what does is, what is the pipeline look like as far as the next 30, 60, 90 days? What are you anticipating um, in your business as far as transactions? Um, I, I know we have like 80 some people in there and probably 20 of those are 30, 60, 90, like right now, I would say. So you've got 20, what I would say, most people would generically say hot leads. And you're telling me 20 hot people in your pipeline and you get to spend time with your family. Yeah. I mean, like, so we so have, hold on, hold on, Joe. So do you have this giant team, like 40 people deep? No, it's just. Jeff, me, and then we just hired a buyer agent slash showing agent and a, a virtual TC. Hmm. So I'm thinking in my mind here, right, is that how do you have the capacity to care for all those people and still have the quality of life they desire? Because I plan for it, I would say. And so what do you mean by that? Is that the the schedule during the day? Is that what you mean you're planning? Yeah, I just, I schedule in my day how I want my day to look. And if I, if I'm in control of that, then that's easy. So I'm home every day when my kids get home from school. 
unless I schedule an appointment, which is, you know, once a month I'm doing that versus, you know, my wife is off on Fridays, so she usually grabs the kids. That's my flex day where I can schedule more things to happen when my wife is available for the kids, you know. Um, Well, Jeff so knows I take I take appointments at night. He's usually available during the times like when I'm picking the kids up. So he schedules some there. So he's home at night. Like we were the ones that get to set our calendar as long as you're like, you know, when I'm setting appointments, I have this time or this time, which, which works better. I have morning or evening, which works better. And then I plug it in accordingly. I don't let them tell me or, don't, you know, tell me where to put my appointments. Something else I picked up on here too, and I'm curious if this makes a big impact, is that um, it sounds to me like the conversations you're having are pointed at individuals to attract listings. I mean, is it exclusively focusing on listings or what, what kind of percentage of the business do you bring that focus to? I I mean, 75% roughly is sellers. Like I don't, the buyers we attract are from our listings and from our clients moving. Like I don't pay for leads or anything that are specific to buyers. We do have lead generation services. Like, um, I don't know, like Homelight is one of them that like gives us buyers, but that then they go to our buyer agent or they do the showings for us, you know. So, okay. So, all right. I like this. That, that's a major takeaway there. If I, if I bring my attention to that, right. Um, uh, so this is really, really interesting. So like one of the things that I think is really uh, an impressive kind of um, situation that you, you and Jeff, an environment, a culture that you and Jeff have really kind of cultivated here is that you guys have sat in these conversations here, right? I mean, in a, a, an extremely, fundamental conversation of, all right, hey, I'm going to show up at, at, in my conversations and I'm going to have the conversations each day. I'm, I'm going to own my calendar. And yet you're finding ways to go ahead and keep it fun and continue to see growth. So now what that what we've kind of described so far could just be a, a culture of, of, of activity. But now you're building a culture of productivity and you alluded to this earlier with reflection and the great questions, right? Um, so... Give me a quick little kind of insight. What do you do with that? Like, what are the practical and tactical things you do to go ahead and see that growth? How do you stay focused on this ad nauseum? Doesn't it get boring? Man, it, it's actually, it, and Jeff and I have had conversations at length. Like, it feels weird if we don't do these things because it's, it's not, it's like, a, it's almost like a part of who we are. But you know how fun it is to like yesterday, I think it was, I don't even remember, like Jeff and I face each other, but our computer screens are against each other, you know, and like we'll dip around the screen and be like, got one. He's like, dude, that sounded great. And like we even record like all of our conversations. So like if we need to go back and go, what did you say that made sense? Or I don't know, it, it's it's fun to. I mean, listings are the are is where it's at, honestly, like it, it's giving you the leverage to I can, I honestly have to meet with them once. And that's it. Like if you do it right. So that's it. You're, you're, OK, so I'm on. So you're, you're have to find the listing side again. And the other thing I'm taking away here and kind of glance by it, but the reflection piece, the question uh, part of it is I'm going to ask you a question to myself. I've got to give myself space. Right. So that means that you're saying, all right, hey, wait a minute. Um, what was that? What was that that sound bite you just said there? Right. You're actually taking a moment to actually reflect on that. You're giving yourself space with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hold on. I mean, this is a great demonstration of high level of okay, show up, do the work, report the work, right? And you're identifying what those activities are, conversations, all those things that you'd want to go ahead and track. Um, and then and then we're reflecting. Now that's created a pipeline of opportunity for you, and and just recently brought on uh, a buyer's agent. Tell me about that experience. Um, horrible, terrifying. No, <laughs> uh, it. I I don't. I I enjoy it, and I don't. I thrive in it, and I don't. I I don't like. I would be more more introverted than extroverted. I can be 100% extroverted, ask Jeff, but then I like go recharge my batteries. I'm very much an introvert. Like, I don't want to talk to people. I close the door to the office when I call. Like, 
I do my own thing and I get out of there. Uh, the people in the office, I enjoy them and I talk to them and I, I like them, but close the door, get my shit done and get home so I can be with my family. That's who I am. Right. But I mean, yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> So what, what, let's start with this, right? So with what what attracted the buyer's agent to your ST? To the introverted guy who shuts the door and and doesn't talk to the folks that are in the office so I can get back to my family. Why why would why would somebody like that that's talented want to be attracted to to a team? It's funny, but we've heard it from like a ton of people in the office is we're the number one mentioned team. If you want to grow your business, that's who you should go talk to. And he turned down one or two, Jeff, other teams, two other teams to work with us. Now, if I remember correctly, you guys weren't even really on the hunt. You were kind of given the Heisman to growth, right? Because of past experience, right? And and, yeah. and so now, and now all of a sudden folks are, are <laughs> you're now known as the team to go to, even though you're pushing people away. Yeah, I don't, I didn't want an, or like, I guess we didn't want an order taker or somebody that can just take your lead and 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 convert it. Like I want somebody that can bring value to the team that understands people are number one and that can serve them, but also they bring a dimension to the team and can help it. So like somebody that would be like invested in growing and not necessarily staying a buyer agent either. Like I'm okay with them growing and taking over my position at some point, right? Like I want them to people who are stuck and just doing the same thing that go work a nine to five. You're probably better off. Like I want somebody that has ambition and wants to show up and do something. Dude's hitting some hard truths today. All right. Yeah. All right. I see how it is. Okay. I straight, I'm a straight shooter level 10, hundred percent. I don't know. It's, it's easier for me to get through life no and navigate if I just tell it how it is. Uh, so, so this is good, right? So I, I just think this is remarkable, right? So you're not out there rapidly recruiting on every web page and, you know, calling every agent in the book and you've got people that are, that are gravitating towards you because the culture you're building. So you said something earlier here that I, that, that I think is an element of self-mastery, right? I'm going to be hard on myself, but not on others. Right. And, and you definitely demonstrated that in our conversation here today. So what does that what does it mean as you're leading the, the buyer's agent? What are your standards? What are your expectations of that individual? Um, that they bring deals to the table. So we just did the open house plan, basically, like, what does that look like? If you treated open houses as a part time job, as far as like real estate, like a lead gen pillar, we called it a part time job. How much could you make? based on your average price point, how many you're doing, how many buyers you're you're pulling or taking and converting. And it was like an aha for him in the coaching session we did. Like, oh, wow, I could be making this much money, like part-time, like we're only working on this an hour a day or a half hour a day, right? All week. And then the weekend comes and I do a two hour open house and I can make that much money, like, okay, now I understand why I need to level up and have certain things ready and do the marketing behind it and get them earlier in the week. So I have time to put them on events and pages and, you know, Facebook groups and whatever, whatever, whatever. So kind of teaching him how to build something better, right? And be intentional about what, what he's doing. And in the, in the meantime, Hey, go do this showing for us. You're getting paid as a showing agent. Oh, by the way, here's a unattached lead you can have because they came from one of our listings because we convert any, I mean, we get 20 leads to 30 leads per listing that we put out there that you can call. Like mm -hmm. you, we're still bringing value, but yeah, we're, we're bringing value as far as coaching you to be a better agent. And by the way, here's a lead or two, you know, like 30. <laughs> Got so so basically they, they've got to show are they willing to do the activities they're earning your time your dedication and additional opportunities there. Yeah, we're um, dating right now. Hmm. We haven't we haven't we haven't married yet. There's no hundred percent in. We has a we have a thirty sixty ninety with him as part of like career visioning. You know, as you're having this with literally the entire conversation, I'm I'm just thinking to myself. I'm like, man. Like, this is so boring, so dry, so basic. So, I mean, like, 
is it is this, is this real? I mean, like, there's got like you're, I'm missing something here. Like, what what's the secret sauce? What aren't you holding back? What are you holding back? What what aren't you telling me? It's it's funny because I wrote down on my notes over here that agents don't want to hear what it takes to be great. They want the easy button and the next shiny object. So you could wrap like making phone calls and talking to people and everything in like a nice little shiny package and they could open it up and go, I don't really want to do that. And you're like, sorry. But like real estate's a contact sport, so put your headset on or get your phone out and make phone calls. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I don't know, but Philip's got some great responses here too. Um, and I'd agree with that, right? There's a, the meme out there at the table of like who wants it and then the other table of who who's willing to do what it takes to get it, right? And the meme is like this little cartoon of like who wants it? It's a giant line. Who's willing to do it? Yeah, yeah. One person, right? Yeah. Uh, makes me think of that. Um, okay, this is kind of a question here just to go ahead and kind of customize it. Is that if I'm listening in and I'm and if I'm not a call cowboy or call cowgirl, should I go ahead and assimilate and be one, or what would you tell me to do? Uh, like so, my number three thing that I kind of live by, if you want, like, what do you call it, a bumper sticker quote to live by or whatever? Uh, don't reinvent the wheel, make it yours. So if you like open houses, go go to thirty different open houses, one each each two each weekend or whatever you want to do and take notes and then make that your thing and do it at a uh, highest level you possibly can. Like you don't have to be an expired listing cowboy that calls like that's not your jive. Then don't do it. If that, if you don't feel good doing that, maybe you make TikToks 15 a day and that's all you do and you attract people or you have a YouTube channel that you pour into or you love open houses or you love like we have a team in our office. They door knock from three to six thirty, I think, every single day. And they are crushing it, crushing. They are like we literally have a text string with Jeff, me, Mark and his wife. And we literally just oh, my God, he just landed a one point three seven million dollar like uh, he accepted offer in an in a area that he door knocks like. That's him. He loves door knocking. And I, I'd like, no, I'll sit on the phone and make a hundred phone calls to your 10 door knocks, but he's killing it and enjoying being a real estate agent. So then do that at a really high level. And then how are you doing that at a very high level? So again, don't reinvent the wheel. Just take the wheel off and make it yours. And if that means like painting it pink, then do that. Like same, like if you're going to door knock, then, then how does that, how do you make that you? Like Jeff doesn't make the the phone calls the same way I do, but we still both call. We both script practice together, but he sounds different than me. But we still have the same outcome because we assume we we attract the people that are most like us. You know, oh man, I love this. Um, you know, you're you're making me think of kind of like a a phrase that that to coin here is authentic mastery. Okay. Right. You're being authentic with yourself and what you're doing, what 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 lights you up. And then you're saying, all right, hey, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go to mastery. All right. So I've, I've just got one other like topic area here that to, to attach to some questions about, because something that shows up is that um, the number one business killer is not going to be our competition. Right. It's a conversation I've had with a lot of my clients this, this week is that it, but it's, it's going to be distractions. What do you do to save off the distractions, right? So that you've got a clear, refined, do, 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 but tell me about real life, right? Real life has distractions. So what do you do there? Um, I haven't watched the news since the Twin Towers fell. So I don't buy into that. Um, one of my bumper sticker quotes is circumstances mm -hmm. does not change responsibility. So my responsibility is still to provide a high level of client service, list houses, be there for my family and provide for them. Um, that that does not mean oh the market's down. Oh, hold on, hold on. So don't the circumstances that. does not what? Huh? Circumstances does not change what? Responsibility. Wow. So I I hold the responsibility to Jeff who's on this call and my family who's at home here. And even because the market's down doesn't mean I don't have to sell houses and get in front of people and help them do what they need to do. It's just maybe my sphere isn't selling, but there are people that are selling and I just need to find them.
Okay, so honestly, dude, I don't even know what you said the last three minutes besides uh, circumstances is, does not change responsibility. You had me thinking here, right? Because you're consistent with this and you're staving off distraction at a pretty high level. Has me thinking here, who do you hold responsibility to? And then when you look at the top of the call here, you said, hey, one of the things that I value is large family, right? So if I'm connecting dots here, you tell me I'm out in left field here, but uh, you hold that responsibility in high regard to your family. And so your daily activities, it's not so Joe can see his name on, on the leaderboard. It's so he can provide the response or make good on the responsibilities made to his family. Is that, am I out in left field on this or is that is that part of the glue that, that keeps the consistency together? Yeah, I mean, there's, my ego has gotten way smaller, but it's still cool to see your name on the leaderboard. I mean, come on, right? <laughs> yeah, he's real, he's real, but, he's real. but definitely, definitely need to provide for my family. Jeff being a part of that, because I've known him for so long and he is him and his family. But like, we show up every day to get better than the day, you know, better than we were the, yesterday, basically. Like we show up every day and go, screw practice was great. How can we make it better? I like what we said, pick that apart. What are we doing here today? Like I set one, can you set one? Like we're, we're motivating each other whether he's leaning around the computer screen with a Nerf gun and, or throwing a ball over the thing or joking around or like we just he, we just ordered books. Uh, there it is. Instant rapport. We're doing a book club like with the buyer agent. Like, let's read this book and find out like because inflection voice, like everything, like how can we get in better rapport with our people? Because they don't care unless we show we actually care about them. So like, how do we do that with how we're sitting with them? Like everything that we do, we just try to do better. Matt, by the way, I'm really happy that you, you kind of brought that up here because if somebody was listening and just heard the high level overview, they might be thinking, man, this is so methodical. It's gotten robotic. Is there any real emotional attachment to it? And the reality here is that you, you're, the fact that you're looking at instant rapport tells me that you care more about the other person than what I would say, the person that's casually committed to the conversation um and, and not as as uh, committed as you are here man i gotta tell you like we we took we took on a lot of conversation i told you that at the onset we were going to cover a lot um and and i imagine we probably did more um water skiing than we did scuba diving in some of the areas so i definitely want to bring you back on to scuba dive a little bit um but if there's one thing that you want to leave the folks with here today what what, what would it be Right, you covered a lot. So what, what's the one thing that's going to make an impact in my world if I'm listening to it? Um, quotes don't work unless you do. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's quick to write down like, oh, that sounded great. Or circumstances don't change responsibility. Or, you know, all the bumper sticker quotes in the world aren't going to do anything unless you actually go out and like do it. And I didn't start calling expireds. Like I didn't start, I started doing open houses because that's what you were supposed to do as a buyer. Like, honestly, I didn't even know what the hell you were supposed to do. Cause we, we, you're like, ah, oh, you're a real estate agent now go do real estate. And you're like, what is that? And you go to the office and there was people like, we're going to lunch and they went to lunch and you're like, well, what, what, what do you do? Like, how do you make money here? Like, how are you going to lunch and driving a BMW or a Mercedes? Like you didn't understand. And then we just... I, I mean, Jeff and I used to work at the other brokerage together. That's how I, I've known him for over 12 years now is like we we started watching those those closed doors. And when they opened, we were like, what, what are they doing in there? Like and just because success leaves clues it, like we don't reinvent the wheel. We just figured out what the hell they were doing and did it. And it was like, hey, we actually enjoy doing this. So that's what we found. Eh? So we went going back to that conversation is find your niche, what lights you up, what you're excited about doing every day, and then do it and figure out how to do it at a high level. And 12 years in, I'm going, I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I wasn't texting. I, I could be sending out a, a mailer. So we're now we're postcarding. Um, I'm not door knocking expired. If I can't get a hold of them, we need to do that. So we developed a program that we're printing out and actually bringing to the door. If we can't get a hold of them, like even right now, I'm going. We're not doing everything we're supposed to do. If we if we want to get to the next level, right? Yeah, I thought that was the last question. So we got another one here. Um, I think it's pretty 
incredible about how you're saying, hey, I know we have like I know we've got a lot more opportunity and potential in front of us, right? And you know, we've talked a lot about the gap in the game, right? And so we're we're accustomed to focusing on the gap and we can get fixated on that. You, you just rattle off like five or six different things here that you know that you're not you're not at a level of mastery that you would claim to be at. How do you handle it? How do you handle that and, and still say, hey, we've got good progress? How do you let that not overwhelm you and become a distraction in itself? Uh, I mean, what what did they say? Rome wasn't built in a day. So like you just day by day. You got to get better than you were yesterday. That's all. Like it, that's it. Really, like I'm I'm not gonna be listing a hundred homes right now today like it's going to take time so but if if i am better than i was yesterday and i i know i gave 100 percent, then i i can go home and feel okay that i can i have another day to do it again like yeah and there's times where your mind may be racing jeff and i just had a conversation about that like but to put it to bed you have an you, you live to see another day, hopefully, and you get to do it again. And if I can try to be better than I was the day before, then I'm, that's good. That's good enough for me, at least. And, and that's what you're reflecting on. And that's what you're documenting of, okay, here's where I, where I had success. Here's where we've got opportunity for improvement. You're staying within in your circle of control. I love, love, love it, man. Um, yeah. Your, your questions help like bring clarity to what did I win at? How could could I have done it better or was I okay with where I was at? Right. And then if I wasn't, then tomorrow I have to be. What am I gonna do? Yeah, I love this man. I love it. Um, okay, so I'm here, I'm a huge fan of making sure that if, if um uh, I've received value from somebody that um, there's an opportunity for me to, to deliver value back to them, I'm gonna do it. So if there's opportunities that that I might have to support you. Uh, what type of, uh, what, what market are you currently serving and how could I get a hold of you if I had some opportunities pop up? Uh, we serve Waukesha, Milwaukee. So most people know Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So the Midwest. <laughs> um, phone number is 414-659-6965. And you can text your call. Now, I also know here too, you've asked if there's folks that uh, would be open to different script practices and different things like that. Um, is that something you'd be open to have conversations around? Yeah, I mean, it's funny, but you don't have to be like really good or, I mean, you could be really bad. Everybody brings something to the table, whether it's a different perspective on things. It, there, all the time when we're scripting, it's like, okay, we went down this rabbit hole long enough. Let's scratch the whole fucking thing and start over. Let's like, how can we sound completely different? And, you know, we're very committed, but then we're, we're okay enough to go. Yeah. Let's scratch that. Start over. How do we sound different? Cause having a different perspective is like, I always say like, you know, you, you're, you've heard the saying, um, get yourself outside the box, like get outside, you know, your comfort zone, your box. I say, get outside and stop reading the label. Like, don't read the label, like figure out something else, like just completely tear the box down, throw it away, recycle it and start over. Like, just get outside your head and think differently. You know, you just shared here that, that um, everybody has something to bring to the table. Everybody has a gift. And for, for somebody to go ahead and really recognize that, they've got to stay in a level of curiosity. And as we reflect on the entire conversation, this has been the ultimate example of staying in curiosity and avoiding judgment man awesome stuff man i appreciate uh, all the fun words here today uh, i'm sure that there's folks that are going to have some questions that might go a little bit deeper on and i appreciate you being a resource and, and sharing your time today man cool appreciate you guys thank you let's make a great week take care